I don't believe, right? I don't believe that the sin that I commit. Not you, no, not you, Adam. The sin that Adam committed, is it transferred to his children or not? The sin itself did not, but the nature, right? Our nature, our human sinful nature, our DNA, you know, DNA of a disobedient. Your DNA doesn't have, your DNA doesn't have sin. I don't know which science lab you saw the DNA in. It doesn't have sin in it. Sin is something, sin is your, sin is your own, uh, what is it, disobedience to God. Okay, the nature of Adam before he ate of the fruit, was it different or the same? Did he have the ability to sin before he even touched the fruit? Again, what is the definition of sin, right? Disobedience it's to God. Disobedience to God. Right. right. When you know, when God created us, He gave us right to choose wrong and and right, right? And and He did not create us as uh, robots. Yeah, there free are, will. Are, yeah. So He gave he us free will. Free yeah. Will, right. Yeah. But, but did you did you listen to the question I asked you? I'm getting was there. G, was uh, Adam his nature? Did he have the potential to sin even before? He touched the fruit that was forbidden. Again, that, that, the answer is... Because your question, your, the, your response was nature. Will. It's in the free will, right? No, no, your response was his nature. I'm asking, was his nature any different? Did he have the free will and the ability to sin even before he touched the forbidden fruit? He had the free will, yes. So the nature was already there. The nature Adam was created with the ability to sin was already there. So your original sin that the nature is then propagated to his children is irrelevant based on the fruit, forbidden fruit being eaten. Whether without that or with that, the nature was already there. Okay, if you, if you argue that the, you know, when the child is born, right? So the opposite it's, it's argument, without sin. The, the opposite argument is then the child is born perfect, sinless, right? Yes. Do you agree with that? that that, do you that, agree with that? That he has no potential. No, no, no. Sin. I didn't say potential. No. Do you agree that the child who is born is without sin, yes, free so of sin? I agree that he hasn't had time to commit sin. No, no. But, but he if he didn't have the time to commit sin, was he free of sin? He was free of sin. Yeah. Thank I you. Agree so you. everyone who's born is born free of sin. Do you agree? That's it. I, I agree. Okay. I agree. So when they grow up, using the nature which they had, or which Adam had since Adam was created the ability to sin was always there. So I really don't understand what's the point of this original sin. Is it relevant? Why is it irrelevant? I mean, like when, when the baby Okay, you explain, born, right? explain to me the original he, sin. The, the baby, right? The baby. Yeah. He's it's gonna, sinless, like he's you said. Gonna, he's gonna, you know, take away a toy from another baby. And? Know? Is he's a sinner? Gonna, he's gonna hit another baby. Okay, right? is that a sin? That, if a baby hits another baby, is that a sin? Because I really want to know at what point does a baby start sinning? So let's say, let's say, you know, um, when that baby grows up, right, and he continues behaving like that, does it become sin? Okay, let me explain to you from the Islamic... I'm, I'm answering. Yeah, I am. But from the Islamic perspective, not from the Christian perspective. But before I go there, I want to know at what age in Christianity would you recognize now this individual has become a sinner? when they disobey God, for example? At what age? There's a time of self-awareness, right? Yeah, which There's is? Times of awareness that... Uh, which is when? Doing something wrong. But, but where is the time of awareness comes? That comes when the parent teaches, right? What is wrong, what is right. So... That's the nurture. It's the, it's the free will again. That's at, the nurture. At what age? The give, me, give me roughly an age. It's like, it's the time... At what age when, will you tell you your tell, kid, you sinner, go finish. to your naughty let room? What age? You're not letting me finish. What age? What it's age? the time when you tell something to your child, right? You say, you know, uh, do not fight with your brother, right? And he continues fighting, ignoring what you just said. So yeah. a two-year-old is a sinner, yeah? What age? The time when he starts doing... What two two, year, two years old? Whatever, whatever that no, no, I'm asking is. you, I'm asking every, every, every you. You're a parent, right? You got children, right? Every child you, are, is you got children, am I right? I, have children. I got children as well. No, no, but let me ask you at what point in your life with your children did you consider my child has committed a sin? What age? The first time when they disobeyed. Yeah, what age was what, what age was your child at that time? I don't remember. Come on, you're a I dad. Don't how, how old are your children? I don't think they're that old. Yeah. 
you you look like a young man so uh, how about you uh, no no wait 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 your, what, you answer the question and then i'll answer from the islamic perspective no problem at all you see the reason the reason you're reluctant is because you know logically it no, wouldn't make sense if you told your two-year-old that you're a sinner am i right as a, as a father, your instinct will not allow you that. No because your fitra is fighting against you now. Exactly. That's what your I'm natural saying. instinct is That's fighting against you. Sure. You know why? And this is Christianity. Actually, now now I'll tell you what the difference is in no, Islam. No grown man actually, gonna trade that. I would not have a problem. Uh, Calling a two-year-old a sinner. Yeah, I would not See? have. But it'll be in a, in a joking way, right? It'll be in a... You can put your jaw back bro. in. <laughs> Bro, honestly, as a grown man, you're saying that. So, but, but a two-year-old two child, child is a sinner. Has the potential. Do you know, wait, wait, wait. Do you know, do you know God Almighty? Would God Almighty consider a two-year-old a sinner? That's why they punish little kids. I want to know whether, whether you're more harsh or your God is more harsh. Would a God consider a two-year-old a sinner? By the way, a two-year-old is a toddler. Sorry, not a toddler even, is an infant. Two and less? Two and less is an infant. You know, if you flew by uh, any airlines, yeah. they'll give you special discount for your for your infant child. Yes, yeah. even they don't consider them to be fully grown to be able to make a judgment between sin and non-sin. I don't know how you, as a father, can. The Bible says that we all have um, sin and fall short of the glory of God. But does that include infants? When it says all, I believe it's all. See, this is what happens when you when you read it literally without even pondering on the meaning of the words that's been used. But, but how, how is that understanding, right? You know, your Bible also says to love your enemy. But wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's, let's not ch change the subject. Let's see if he takes that literally you know, and starts how, loving Hitler. How is Hitler that understanding of, of um, when the child is considered sinful, right? How is that understanding affects your, you know, um, eternal life? That, you know, whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. A two-year-old, imagine a two-year-old according to you, if he's sin, will he go to heaven or hell, according to you? I believe that if a two-year-old sins, you know, what is the sin again? Disobedience to the parent, right? No, to God. If, well, Disobedience but, to God. They don't have a concept of... Oh, you know, wow! Of so you, say it again. Say so again. you change the meaning of sin all of a sudden? They have to. They have to be taught, right? They have to be taught. Uh, taught to there sin. Is a, there is the God. Taught to sin. What are you saying? Do a two-year-old need to be taught how to sin? He doesn't need to be taught. He already knows. It's what? inborn. So a two-year-old knows what sin. That, that is one thing you don't have to teach the child. Is it? Is this digging himself in a hole? You have to teach him to respect others. My friend, what's your name? Your what's your name? My name is Hashem. The only thing you don't have to teach yeah, don't, is, don't the, you know, is my, my name is Hashim. What's your name? Marat. Marat? Marat. Marat, okay. Look, my friend, I think you're self-interpreting your Bible. And this is a problem with most Protestants, not just you. They interpret it by themselves and they think they are right. I asked you, a two-year-old, if according to you, he or she sins, will they go to hell or heaven? If they die, right? Of course, if they die. Yeah, they will go to heaven. They'll go to heaven even if they sin? Yeah, even if they sin. Okay, so they don't need to understand the crucifixion of Jesus. There is a, there is a point where, yeah, they don't. Like one-year-old, two-year-old, you know, they don't. Okay, so why are you saying it's, it's a sin then? It's, it's, if, anybody, if anybody who sins and they can go to heaven, then it's not a sin. But, okay, so... So when you, without being when forgiven, you go, so without when, being forgiven. When, when you go to heaven, right? On what basis will you know whether you okay. go to hell or heaven? Good. So like, now I'm going to answer you based on the Islamic perspective. So in Islam, in Islam, we don't say a two-year-old is a sinner because a two-year-old, a, two, a two-year-old hasn't developed the judgment to understand between what is good and bad, what is sin. In fact, they don't even know what is dangerous and not dangerous. Okay, that's the reason you see sometimes children have accidents which shouldn't happen because they don't even understand the danger. Now, from an Islamic perspective, unless and until the child has grown and has reached the age of puberty, they are free from accountability of sin. They are free from it until they have reached the age of puberty. This is when we say the age they have developed or have the capacity to understand between right and wrong, between sin and not, not sin, okay? Before that, 
their excuse. But that doesn't mean they are left to fend for themselves. Obviously, their parents still instill good adab in them, the good uh, habits in them, and teach them the difference between good and bad, okay, good and evil, and so on. But they are not accountable. That's the reason, even, even in this society, which is not really Christian, or many societies, modern civilizations, they, they have a jail for children, yes? And there is no jail for if they are a, a certain age. Beyond, only if they reach that age, then only they can put them in that special jail, meant for children, juvenile, you see? Why is that? Because every human understands the psychology of a child is not the same as a grown man or a woman. So you cannot treat them the same. But, why, why? but you're saying you're, you're, you're putting the entire religion of yours, Christianity, in disrepute when you say a two-year-old committed a sin. And then you said, you, you in fact changed the definition of sin because you realized it wasn't going to your, <laughs> it wasn't going according to your plan. So you said, according uh, disobedience to parents instead of God. Okay. What? You know, if a parent, let me ask you this, if a parent tells somebody you, you to, to, to worship, question. I did, I did, no, from Islamic I, perspective. No, I asked you about okay, which question did I not answer? How, how you, as an adult, yeah. you know, gonna determine whether you go to heaven or hell. Oh, how? When you, when oh, I see. You, when you face God, right, yes. on that judgment day, yeah. how are you gonna know? So Al gonna Allah has promised us heaven, paradise, yes. Jannah, yes. yes, but it's conditional that you obey Allah and obey the messenger. You do good deeds and Allah will enter you into an eternal place of bliss called Jannah. Yes. Okay? We don't decide. Who decides? Even for you, you don't decide. It is God who decides. Because you know, there are many born again Christians. They said, you're going to hell. And you know, those born again Christians, after many years, they became Muslims. Yes. And then I asked them, what happened to that statement you made about going to hell? Saying, you know, Allah gave me hidayah, Allah gave me guidance. And now I've opened my eyes and I've realized that it is not up to us mortals to decide this. But God has told us how we can go to that place. Okay? And not by the worship of a man, not by the worship of an idol, not by the worship of any creation, except the worship of the one true God. And that is the Almighty God. What you call Him, regardless of that, the important thing is that the God of Jesus. The God of Moses, the God of Abraham, and the God of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. Yes, that is the God you and I need to worship. Yes, and our God does not tell us that two-year-old is a sinner, or he's going to hell, or whatever it is. Yes, you need to understand that when God gives you a doctrine, gives you a law, it is just and not unjust. Like in Christianity, you cannot be forgiven without the crucifixion of a completely innocent man. Am I right? There is no forgiveness in Christianity without the shedding of blood. Yeah? Without the shedding of blood, there is no. In Islam, in Islam, we have clear justice where every individual is responsible for their own sins. They're accountable for their own sins. So, can I say something now? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, my understanding of Islam, right? You have to accumulate enough good deeds in order for God then to say, okay, your good deeds outweigh your no, bad deeds. No. Therefore, hey, hey, let him finish, let him finish. you're going to be accepted into heaven, right? That's not true. So that's my understanding of Islam. Okay, you understand. That is a misunderstanding. You're not letting me finish. No, but it's a misunderstanding. You need to correct you it. You can correct it after. Okay, you know, no problem. I, finish I your point. Say, yeah, my point. Finish sure. your point. So, whereas in Christianity, when Jesus was crucified yeah. on the cross, there were two criminals okay. that uh, have been, you know, killed for, for for sinning, for being murderers or stealers. But one of them believed in in Jesus. One of them said, "Remember me when you go to your father." And Jesus said. Truly, truly, I tell you that tonight you're going to be with me. That is, he did not have to do all of these good deeds. He did not have to go to, you know, temples or to do anything. He just believed, you know, he trusted that if Jesus says, I'm going to be with, you know, God the Father tonight, I'm going to be God, with God the Father. And that faith basically saved him. And he didn't have to do anything. You forgot one thing. He was tied to the cross. When did he have time to pray? He's begging, he's begging for his Think father. about it, man. 
Even the analogy you gave is completely absurd. Okay? The first and foremost thing is that Muslims do not go to paradise based on their deeds. It is by the mercy of Allah we enter paradise. No one, not even the Prophet ﷺ enters Jannah, yes, except by the mercy of Allah. Because no matter what deeds you do, yes, they are nothing in comparison to what Allah really deserves. None of it. Okay? What you talked about, the mizan or the, or the scales on the day of judgment, that will determine your position in the Jannah. You know, they say there are like 100 levels in Jannah. What position you deserve will be based on your deeds, but not the entry. The entry to Jannah is based primarily on the mercy of Allah, yes. not on the blood of anyone. Yes? Either a dead animal or a dead human. No, none of that. Allah is able to forgive and he's also able to punish yes. by his will, by his justice, by his wisdom, by his mercy, and by his love. Okay? So my friend, your misunderstanding of that man on the cross, he entered paradise because he believed in Jesus. You know, we Muslims, we have no issues with that. First and foremost, you need to understand that we don't believe that Jesus was ever on the cross. Yes? And that he died like a criminal. This is an insult to Jesus, peace be upon him, who is one of our mightiest messenger, whom the Muslims consider to be the Messiah, and we love and respect him. If Allah wants to save him, then no one can harm him. Be they the Jews, be they the Romans of that time, no one can ever harm him. Amen. Yes? So what I'm saying, my friend, is this. That, even look, if you analyze the story, the narrative of that uh, guy who was supposed to be crucified with Jesus, you know, he had faith in Jesus and for that he got saved. And if Jesus said, tonight you'll be with me in paradise, then your own Bible says that that night Jesus did not go to paradise. He went to Sheol. Sheol is not paradise. It's like hell. It's like Hades. So unless you're telling me paradise and Sheol is the same for you Christians, then you have a big problem, my friend. Because you cannot even differentiate between hell and heaven, let alone enter it. Okay? So Jesus did not go to paradise that night. He went to Sheol. You know that, right? Yeah, he went Good. To the, yeah. So why did Jesus lie to him? You'll be with me in paradise tonight. Or today. Why did Jesus lie to him? Sorry, not only that... that so can I, say again? Sorry, what is written that on that day goes to hell? Jesus Sheol, Sheol. Read it. Just Google Jesus Sheol. S E O L. S H E O L. Sheol. Just read it. Google. Just Google it. You'll find it. I don't. No, no. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. So Sheol is is like it's, it's translated as a place where this is the place of the dead. Okay. Not paradise. So, can, and, I so well. can, okay. I, can I say something now? Yeah, Luke 23. Is it Luke 23? You said that before that, if, for example, in, uh, with Allah mercy, people Yeah, come here. I can barely hear you. Sorry, sister. Just come here. No, no, you're not in the camera. Just come in the side. No, you said it's that you deserve. You need to speak up because the other guy's shouting. You said before yeah. that with Allah mercy. Yeah, we enter a Jannah by the mercy of Allah. With forgiveness, right? Of course, yes. So, imagine uh, if someone. Any mistake, very bad mistake, right? We, uh, if Quran is written, that will be forgiven. Okay, so any any wrong that is done, yes, Allah is going to not just let it go scot free. Spe specifically, if it's against their own brother, you know, if they have harmed them, they have taken money from them, did not return it, they have a debt. So for that, there is two types of forgiveness in Islam. One is when you commit a sin against Allah directly, Allah is able to forgive you without any penalty. Two, two categories, two categories. Yeah, two categories of... No, no, if I explain to you, you'll understand. Okay, so one type of forgiveness where Allah doesn't demand anything, if he wishes to forgive, is where, he, where his creation commits a sin directly against him. Okay, say for example, right now in the month of Ramadan. Yes, we fast for whom? For Allah. Yes? If any person deliberately doesn't fast, then it is actually sinful. But Allah in His mercy and wisdom is able to forgive you. Yes? Maybe there's maybe there's some circumstance, maybe he couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't fast for that reason. So Allah is able to forgive 
those kind of sins which are committed against him. Yes? And we are not saying that he forgives everything. We are, I've very clearly said Allah is able to forgive and able to punish as well. But he doesn't demand any blood from anyone. And the second category of... But, uh, according to the gentleman, he did not say that Jesus demanded blood. What he tried to say, I think, related to Christianity, was that the Jesus was crucified and that repentance... My question to him was, without crucifixion, can you be forgiven? Without the crucifixion of an innocent man like Jesus Christ, can you as a Christian be forgiven? Can you be forgiven? Yes or no? Possibly. Huh? Possibly. Possibly. Have you, are you a Christian? Okay, then I don't... I, I don't uh, the question is, when you said there is categories of forgiveness... Yeah, yeah, so I was coming to that. No, no, they, you're, you're mixing Islam and Christianity. Let's stick to one... one. So one is... The, the two categories of forgiveness in Islam is one, when a Christian commits a sin directly to Allah, Allah is able to forgive him without any penalty, if he wills it. Second, wait, wait, you always interrupt when I'm finishing the point. Let me finish and then you ask a question. Uh, the second category is that if, if a Muslim commits a sin against his brother or a sister, then that has to be forgiven by that individual against whom the sin was committed. So say for example, a Muslim hits another Muslim for no reason, then that is a sin against that Muslim. Unless that person forgives him, Allah will not forgive him. But the, so then you could see the, so the person needs to forgive. Yes, person. that person so you has to forgive. Your God. What's that? You are your God because What's your religion, by the way? Because you're coming from all different angles. No, no, no. I need to know because in order to address you, yeah, yeah, in order to address you, I need to know where you're coming from. If you're going to stay on the fence and then start throwing stones everywhere, we don't know which we don't know which uh, which point you're trying to make here. But I'm trying to give you an indication of what I'm trying to listen from you. You said that the brother needs to forgive the other. Do you at least believe in God? See, I make a question. No, no. Do you believe in God? I've answered many of your questions. Yeah. Do you believe in God? Okay, I'll go back to him. If you're not answering, I'll go back to him. You see, this is what what happens when you're genuine and you're proud of your faith you don't hide behind it okay you're, you're proud to say it this is the name of my God this is whom I worship and here is my faith okay but when you when you're not confident you become insecure then you don't want to say what your God's name is you don't want to say what your religion is you think you're going to stay on the fence but anyway if she doesn't want to answer that's a, that's a we are not going to force her okay so anyway I was completing the second category of sin where it is against another individual so that individual has to forgive you or that for example if there is some money you owed then that money has to be repaid back before you're forgiven you otherwise Allah is going to be unjust just to forgive you for making somebody as your victim Allah is not unjust Allah has made injustice haram for himself that means he's always just to anyone regardless of your faith your background whether you want to say who your god is or not you are going to see you're going to see justice from him so you know that according to islam let's say two nations they don't know god right but they one nation killed another nation so how is that nation that killed is going to be judged what is the you know how are they going to be forgiven or not forgiven no who said they're going to be forgiven killing killing someone without justice is something which is the one of the biggest sins in Islam murder okay it's not just forgiven like that but if there is justification for example there is an oppressing government in another country yes and your country is able to get those people out of oppression then as a neighboring country it becomes your right I mean today we are in the nation nation states you can't just go and invade another country but back back when they were not nation states when there were no permanent boundaries uh, with the help of the United Nations it was a different it was a different thing so yeah it is but but hold on do you think Ukraine or Russia has anything to do with religion it's political it's Greek nothing to do with religion so whatever they do, whatever they harm each other, they will be judged by God Almighty. No doubt about it. Yes, by the way, both are Christian nations, isn't it? They're fighting each other. Yeah, so, you know, I want to address, you know, the, you said that uh, 
I want you to address about the crucifixion, which we haven't yeah. answered yet. Yeah, so you Can you be forgiven without the shedding of blood of an innocent man? With so our forgiveness before God is through the blood of Jesus. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Do you consider that to be just? It is, it is, it is not. Is it, it is, just to murder an innocent man for the sins of others? So that's where the justice of God comes in, right? God is just and he's merciful at the same time. How is he just when he kills an innocent man? Yeah, let's go move that because there's a lot of noise. Yeah. I think this should there's another noise here. Let's go down there. It's nice and sunny as well. Mashallah today at Speaker's Corner, 17 degrees. Beautiful weather. Alhamdulillah. Okay, just here. Should be fine. Yeah, just see if it's within the frame. Okay. So yeah, I mean I want to understand how is it justice to kill to to plan the torture and crucifixion of a completely innocent man like Jesus Christ. How is it justice? It's still noisy, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it's because the weather is so good, everybody wants to enjoy the weather. And uh, yeah, it's nice, nice crowd here at Speaker's Corner today. Alhamdulillah. Okay, it's, be it's better, more, much more quieter here. Was it I, I believe, okay, God is merciful, right? Yeah. And He is completely just. That is, He is 100% merciful and He is 100% just. Okay. So that means if, you know, if I committed some kind of a crime, there, there's going to be a penalty. There has to be a shedding of blood. Why? Why you say that? Why is because, that? Because that's that's, homicidal, man. That, 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 is, that comes from the Genesis. That is the understanding of... Uh, how from Genesis the spiritual world. where in Genesis is the atonement of sin so when Adam and Eve right yeah. committed the first sin disobeyed God yeah so what happened then you know they they closed themselves with fig leaves because they knew uh, they were naked they were ashamed okay but then God came and he gave them skins he made the clothes out of skins, animal skins, right? Okay. A goat or sheep, we don't know. Right. But that was the first blood that had to be spilled. Who spilled that blood? God spilled that was blood. Was it for the atonement of sins? He was for, uh, yeah, like basically... No, 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 he, don't say yeah. If you don't have evidence, don't say yeah. Was that, was it to cover them with animal skin? Yeah. Okay, or was it for atonement of sin? Why was the animal killed? Because that's what justice of God. And and how do you know God? Wait, wait. How do you know God killed it? Just Maybe justice. it was already a dead animal whose skin was put on them. How do you know God killed it? Because the Bible says so. Where does the Bible I, say I, God killed the animal? It Show me. Say. Exactly. Says, so why you why you making assumptions about things you don't know? Because that's the that's the context. And the no, context no, no. You made that, it the context. That God, you know. My uh, friend, you made it the animal. context which is not there. You invented a context. The reason you invented it is because you want to justify the killing of an innocent animal for the atonement of sin, which but is what, which you, is not what okay. God did in the in the you, garden. You arguing that you know innocent blood of an animal should not be spilled, right? Not for the atonement of sin, no. But why? Why? If I you want to, if you want to have why, some thicker, Muslims, yeah, go ahead and slaughter know, an animal uh, if you want. To. Why Muslims sacrifice a lamb today? You know, the we like our tikka, we like lamb biryani, you know? <laughs> we like all that, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, that, that's not true. Are you delicious. vegan, that's sir? That's delicious. No, that's, that's exactly. Why you do it. <laughs> You're the last no. person to speak about it. Don't no, let me start to get started. You're, you're doing it because it's for, yeah, it's it's part of atonement. Of no, no, sin. the reason we do Eid al-Adha is, it's actually a sunnah of Ibrahim. You know, when Prophet Abraham was commanded by God to go and sacrifice his only son, yes? It was a test, yes? Because at the end of that sacrifice, no human was harmed. The only animal that was killed, yes, was not for the atonement of sin either. Because Abraham passed the test that he would be willing to even sacrifice his own child. Then God favored him. As Muslims, we respect and revere Ibrahim every single day in our prayers. Yes? When we say, the Durud Ibrahim. Yeah, I don't know what you say. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, this is in the prayers. We say, he's, yeah. we say, we we bless him and his family. Yes. And this is the reason we follow in his footsteps. Two things: 
circumcision and Eid al-Adha and also the, uh, the Hajj, three things, three major things in Islam which we follow from the Sunnah of Ibrahim and Islam. Okay? And guess what? Jesus practiced at least two of them. Exactly. Yes, Jesus was no vegan or vegetarian. Okay? Yeah, I agree with that. And they, you know how the Jewish people, the kosher meat, yeah. yes, they slaughter it in a particular way, That's which is almost identical to how the Muslims do it. it. Yes? We say the name of Allah when we slaughter, they say the name of their God when they slaughter. Both of us, the Jews and the Muslims, in Judaism and in Islam, the procedure is almost identical. Okay? So now, have you understood? In Genesis, there is no atonement of sin by the animal sacrifice. This is a Christian invention. Okay, they try to put it everywhere in the Bible where they, they don't see it even. So, so you're saying, I'm attaching a context that is not there. Absolutely. I can say this 100% guarantee. But, but the reason you cannot show me a refutation of that is because now you know and you agree as well. But you're just not willing to say it out loud. Do you agree? No, I, I disagree. Okay, so I, once I again, it is it is there. Um, was it for the atonement of sin? It was for the justice of, of God to be satisfied. How is it just to kill an innocent animal? How is it just for the atonement of your sin to kill a perfectly innocent animal or an innocent human on a cross? This is only a Christian can make this claim and think is justifi justified that's, that's when you have no says. when you, you have know, no justification you know, don't, for it. Don't argue with me about it. That's what the Bible says. Oh, you so know? it's blind faith then? Um, it's it's, it's blind faith, isn't it? Earlier you tried to make a two-year-old a sinner, and now you are making a completely innocent prophet you and Messiah same, you know, to be a sinner. You are at the same time making assumptions, like in the you know why why do you say that uh, Jesus was not crucified? Because he wasn't. Allah says in the Quran. Which which verse? Four one five seven one five eight. Check it out. But Surah An Nisa. So you are saying that uh, somebody? Allah says he was, was neither crucified nor was he killed. Okay. But, but it appeared. To but resemble. no, no. He never somebody says somebody to resemble. Okay. It appeared to them so. Okay. So for example, you know, right now the sky appears to be of this color, but at sunset the sky will be a different color. Is it the same sky? So, so, so people have different somebody, perceptions. Somebody else, right? You're saying somebody else was crucified instead I of Jesus. I never said that. You said it. So who was then crucified if it wasn't Jesus? Somebody is always crucified in the times of Romans. So then, you know, do you it, think God it, can save Jesus if He wanted to? It, it, so let, let, let me let me yeah, let me ask you a okay. question. Then you know, it, it appears to be that you know God was like a cosmic trickster, right? Why? He, he allowed this man, innocent man, right? Innocent man. Why does it say innocent man? Where are you, where are you getting this from? Is it in the Quran? Crucified. No, no, you have it in your head. Where did but, you get it from? Okay, let's say. You no, know, no, not let's say. No, 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 no. You made an allegation against Allah. Okay. Billah. So you have to have evidence for that. You can't just make up a statement. It was. Is okay. it in the Quran? He was getting crucified for the sin that he did not commit. Who? Whoever that man was. Where did you get this man from? I don't know. Tell me. No, you're the one making the claim, so you tell me. I'm not making the claim. Who I'm made the claim? Did Jesus. I make the claim about my a man? Claim. Okay, my claim, my claim is that it was Jesus. No, no, no. So it is your claim then, right? My claim is Jesus. No, no, hold on. Was the one it is your claim about an innocent man on the cross. Am I right? Not my claim. Jesus is the innocent man that that was crucified. Okay. Yes. So you made an allegation against Allah. What was that? Do you want to take it back? So, take, so take it you back know first. the. So. Uh, what is it? Um, Allah says in the Quran, He was neither one, crucified one, nor killed. Is it one? One what? Uh, the reason, the reason you're bringing. Four one five seven, right? Yeah. You say. Read it, read it. Yeah. See if there's an innocent man yeah. in there. No, no, read it because it's, you made. It's not, it. Okay, I, so, it's, so it's are you there, going to apologize for making an allegation against Allah? So, are you I'm honest? Not, I'm not, okay, are you I'm a good saying, Christian? I'm saying that it who is can, not there. Who, Allah did not make that So why that did you make that allegation against you making, Allah? You making that allegation. It's on camera. You can watch it. You, you making that allegation. Okay, what somebody, allegation did I make? Somebody else. Did I, somebody I say somebody else? else? Yes, did I say said, somebody else? You said, yes, you said. You no, implied, I didn't. You implied. What, how did I imply? You implied that it was not Jesus. If it was not Jesus. Okay, so if it wasn't Jesus, then how did I imply it was somebody who is innocent? How did I imply that? You implied that it was somebody else than Jesus. Okay, you so now you have made a correction you, you to your own not, statement. You did not say... I have made it very clear. It wasn't Jesus. You then made the claim my, that it my, was an innocent okay, man. My, my claim, my claim, he was innocent of what Jesus was getting crucified for. 
Oh, was Jesus innocent? Because Jesus claimed to be God. And okay. That's why he was. Why did he claim to be God? Why did Jesus claim to be God? Let me finish. You know, you're asking, you didn't, you're not letting me finish. Because you're making uh, so many allegations that you don't even want to back up. You made an allegation against Allah that he was some sort of a cosmic deceiver, now um, and you haven't even substantiated that. Do you so, think I'm just going to let it slip? No, I'm not. I'm going to hold you accountable for that. So, so if Jesus. So Allah did not deceive. Not, you know, okay, when, when let Allah. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, first, let me finish. first let take me it finish. back. Take it back what let he said that he was a cosmic deceiver, and then I'll let you finish. I, I disagree that he was a cosmic deceiver. He would not Good. do such a thing. Good. So don't he say that next time. He would not do such a thing. Alhamdulillah. But let me finish. Um, Go on. Let me finish why your interpretation is wrong. What's my interpretation? That he was not Jesus. The, ultimately, that he was not Jesus who was crucified. That is wrong. That why is that wrong? On because what basis is if, that wrong? Because if, you know, there was eyewitnesses. Can you Ma name any? Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Where? was there, you know, by the cross. Yeah. And when, now, who said uh, this, when, by the way? Jesus was crucified. Who said Mary was there? Let me finish. No, but I need to understand. Finish. You're making. So, you know, if you make so many points, we won't have time. Let's take when, one at when, a time. When, when, so, who when told you Mary was there? Who told you this? When he was getting crucified, yeah. Jesus said to John, one of his disciples, that today this is going to be your mother. Take her and take care of her, basically. Who told and you that was John? It doesn't Jesus, say John in there. Jesus, Jesus no, no, it doesn't say John. You John made it up. Disciple. No, no. So Where does it say it was John? If, if God did not want Christianity to propagate, right? If God did not want this belief that Jesus died and rose again to spread, he would have stopped. Right? You know, Why did he allow? Why did he allow people to believe in something that was not true? Why did God allow? Because, Why did God allow? That was true. He allowed it because yeah, it was true. Why did God allow paganism? You're not answering my question. You answer. No, but you're question. saying that God would have stopped it. Why did God not stop paganism if He wanted to? Like, yes, for example, yes. the Hindus were wrong long yeah, before the Christians. Yeah. Why did God not stop them? Yeah, you answer. If that is the logic you're working on, that God will stop anything that's wrong, then it fails miserably. So once okay, again, can I, can I ask no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I'm answering. No, no, you, you haven't why? answered. No, who I'm told you, John? You. I'm answering you. Why he would he would should stop? Because millions of innocent people would die. Because all of these Christians who believe that he was the son of God died for nothing. If it was not true that their death, their life was nothing. You know, without, without Jesus' death and resurrection, Christianity falls apart. Of course it does. It, it falls apart. Of course it does. And that's, and that's the reason I'm saying it's the biggest very, injustice. It would have been very important for him to make yeah, sure. Yeah. So, you, so you want to see allowed, sacrifices all over the Bible, including Genesis, allowed, when it's not there. Allowed, that is what you're doing. The reason you're doing it is because... To be look, look, my friend. The reason God doesn't stop everything is because God has given human beings the free will. He's testing you. Just like when the Antichrist comes, he'll do miracles greater than Jesus. Do you agree? So I, those people who, I, I, I those people know. who, can't, those know. people who are going to base that religion. The where it says that he's going to do greater miracles than Jesus. His own disciples. His greatest miracle is Did Jesus not say? He, that is the greatest, you know, miracle. How, how, what? Dying and rising again. My that friend, is dying is not a miracle. There's, there is no dying is a weakness. It's not a miracle, especially for a God. Dying by, you know, dying by, dying by God, by His own creation, is shameful. Actually, it's an embarrassment, not a miracle. That How is, can God die is, by His own creation? That is, that is why you know He took our shame upon Himself. You know, there are certain sins that require a blood, you know, to be spilled. Why? You know, there's not, honor not in Islam. Not there's in Islam. honor killings, right? Yeah, um, that is in Christianity as well, not in Islam. But but the, honor the killing idea, is found in the Bible, is, not in the know, Quran. There has to be some kind of a blood spill because why? Why you guys are so sin, obsessed with blood <laughs> spilling? Why? <laughs> why are you so obsessed with the spilling of blood? Because it's in the Bible. Yeah, I know, but why is your God so bloodthirsty? Our God well, doesn't demand you, blood. Why, why are you claiming, you know, blood thirsty? The that, reason I... accusation. No, it's not an accusation that, because that you agree with that. That is an accusation that he is a blood thirsty Okay, I'll guy. tell you why it's not... You have to take it back. Shall I, shall I, I tell I you why? I don't... I, I'm not going to accept you saying that our God is a blood thirsty Shall I tell God. you why? Let me ask you I, this. I, I'm re I reject it. No, no, but I, I gave you the reason why I rejected it. Give me the reason why you rejected it. Go on. I gave you the reason why it, because you had no, no clue at all as to why Allah saved Isa alayhi salam.
Jesus. You had no clue who was that person you said was innocent on the cross. You have no clue. You made an allegation you purely made an based. Allegation that he was some somebody else was. No, yeah. no. You see, you're doing it again. No, I'm I didn't make the it. claim. You, you did. You said that. Okay, go home died. and watch this video. It's on Dawahwise. Okay, and then you tell me who's telling the lie. Here. So I never made such a claim. You did, and now I'm telling you why. Why the biblical you, God is bloodthirsty? I'll right? give you the you, you I'll give you the substantiation. So the so, substantiation is this: Can you, as a Christian, be forgiven without the spilling of blood of either an animal or a human? Our only forgiveness of sin is in Jesus Christ, in His blood. Can no you, other blood. Okay. So no, you need. No so your blood. God does it's need blood, very, right? It's very distinct. Okay, it's very distinct. What? Like. You cannot die for me. I cannot die for you. No animal can die for me. It has to be um, a power that is above above us, right? A human, right? He's a human. He is, Only human has blood he is, from the human beings. We, you know, we believe that he was the word of God that became flesh. Yeah. You know, you're actually helping me out now. Flesh. You're justifying and why you need blood. Man, you're agreeing with me. Human. You're agreeing with me, my friend. Do you not realize that? That you cannot be forgiven without blood. And that's exactly what I, I said about your God. Blood, your God Jesus, doesn't, right? you, you know, there's no concept of forgiveness in Christianity. There's only payment by blood. But it was done once and for all. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't need It doesn't do matter. Killing a human being who is else. innocent once is wrong. It doesn't matter who says it. What about I, I agree it is wrong, the but, for one life? but then he yeah. went willingly, right? He Whether it's willingly, willingly or unwillingly, when when there is no other way, because he's justice, other than he him dying, that, that 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 yeah, he has to he had to come and rescue us basically. Could God so, not forgive you like the way Allah forgives? Why your God demands blood all the time? Why can't he forgive like the way Allah does? He for, he's forgiven us. No, it's a payment by in, blood in, in Jesus. Yeah, but it's 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 not my blood. It's not your blood. I didn't right? say your blood. I said it's, it's a, a it's, it's a blood it's, of an innocent man. It's a blood of of a son of God. <laughs> was he was he a man who died on the cross, <laughs> or did God die? Who died on the cross, man or God? He was God in human flesh. That so God in human flesh died on the cross. Seriously, can God die? His own You're just digging yourself okay. deeper in the hole now. You know, it's not funny. Okay. That's is, about your you God. Know, that's you blasphemy. Know, that, that you know, you 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 know, you come from a monotheistic God, right? That there is. Where do a, you come from? I'm, I come from a Hindu. Um, <laughs> that I, I also believe in one God, but I believe in three triune, triune God, right? Okay, there so you, God you agree that is not monotheism? You agree, right? That is monotheism. So why, so why did you say we come God? from monotheism? But you don't believe in the triune God. Do the it Jews believe in a triune point. God? That, that Did is, Jesus believe in a triune God? If, if uh, you know, like if, if if God in your concept dies, then but but God no in God. my there is no God exactly that, yeah right. But in my but concept, in God never dies. In Christianity, there is the kill you know, one, you got two more left. <laughs> the Son of God, that is. Uh, that so is if God. one is dead, how many are left? In your concept, it's one God. So who who God. died? That one God died. Who died? It's the Word of God. Right? Doesn't, doesn't the that flesh, make the Holy the human, Spirit the human, stronger then? Because the, the, the Holy human, Spirit never died. Okay, the human Aren't flesh. Why are you worshiping and praying in the name of the Holy Spirit okay. more than you do in Jesus? The human flesh, the um, the Spirit of God was in the human flesh, and that human flesh has died. Is that another person? And and Jesus, right? Is that another person or the same person? And the Spirit of God that was living in Jesus, you know, like you're saying, went into into hell and spent some time there. Your God went to hell. Why? To pay for our sins. He to pay for your sin. He has to go to hell. He spent some time there. He. Um, you know, hell is made he, for the evil people, then for the sinners, then the, for the devils, then the father, not for God. Father God raised him from the dead. He raised. Father God. Not only his 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 spirit lived, right? His spirit lived. His spirit did not die, but but his flesh, that is the human element of it, has died. And, and God raised that human element, basically, to life again. Okay, um, so when you said that the human flesh died, is that the same person as the second person of the Trinity, or is that a different person? That was Jesus. Was it a different person or same person? That was Jesus. Why are you second not answering? You he, see, he's a brave man. JC is a brave man. Yeah, but it's still probably still wet under the years, maybe. 
What is the measure? Are you why, why are you reluctant to answer this question? Was the person who died on the cross, was he the second person of the Trinity or not? Yes, second person of the Trinity would be Jesus, yes. Okay. Is the second person of the Trinity immortal or mortal? Motor by human, it was just two. Yeah, the, yeah. Don't divorce. He's, the yeah human, but the same person, right? Yeah, his yeah. human. So nature, is the person his immortal or immortal? Mortal. His Both. human nature was. You can't have two. But not, not his spirit. If you are immortal, you cannot be mortal. So the second person of Trinity is it immortal or mortal? Jesus Which one is it? These are two natures. Divine you know, he can speak for himself. Right. He doesn't need hundred percent human, hundred yeah. percent yeah. man. Okay, That's so if you're hundred percent human and hundred percent what man? Right. 100% human and 100% man, the same thing. Once again, is the second person of the Trinity immortal, means he cannot die, or is it mortal, can die? Which one is it? You can't have it both ways, my friend. So his human element, right, was, mm -hmm. was mortal. Right. The, the, the word of God was immortal. That, okay. that element. Was is, your, is your soul immortal or mortal? My my soul is immortal. Okay, so are you immortal or mortal? My human. Will you will you ever die? My flesh, yeah, my flesh will die. Okay, is your flesh At a different person to you? Same person, right? So this person is it Morad? What was your name? Sorry, Morad, yeah. Morad. Is Morad mortal or immortal according to Christianity? The fact that you'll die one day. My my flesh will die, but my spirit will be yeah. you know live forever. Now, how many persons are you? Is there is there you know uh, in hell or have heaven? Good. How many persons are you? I'm one person. Okay, is that one person mortal or immortal? Don't split into flesh and divine now. Sorry, spirit. Because what you keep doing is you keep dividing that one person into several different categories. That's not how it works. You know when somebody from your family died? You don't say the flesh died, do you? You say the person died. And today is the funeral of that person. They don't, they don't write on the card, the flesh of right. John died right. today. Right. So let's go all bury the flesh of John. What, what was your name? Hashim. Hashim. Okay. But can I explain how I understand Trinity? No, no. Before you understand yeah. the Trinity, understand the nature of a person. So, so, so a per I, okay, when God, I, okay, God the Father, if I ask you this question, does God the Father die? God you still have the to Father think? did not die, no. Okay, good. Uh, that was actually a bit faster than your yeah, question okay, let, about let me, the second person. What about God the Holy Spirit? Does he die? He, yeah, he did not die according to the Bible. God, the, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father did not die according to the. So which God died? Yeah, yeah. Je Jesus, um, the Son of God, right in the human flesh. Yeah. Is Why did you remove the title God of God the? Why did you remove it from Jesus? You give the title to God the Son. Sorry, God the Holy Spirit and God the Father, but you remove the title all of a sudden from God the Son. What happened? Because you realize your nafs, your fitra, kicked in once again. And you realize it cannot be God who died. Can I, can I tell you... Do you agree with that? God doesn't die. Can, can I explain uh, how I understand Trinity? Okay? okay, go on. So we have the sun, right? Yeah. It's, it's one sun, right? But it has three different elements. There has three different ways we perceive it. Uh, one is the light. See, we, we, we see the light. Mm -hmm. Then we, second way we experience the sun is by the worms. It gives us the worms, right. right? The third way we experience the sun is the earth is orbiting around the sun, right? The earth is kept by the gravitational power of the sun. So our earth does not spin into the orbit and get you know, lost somewhere in, into the galactic space. What's your so, point? But it's one sun. Right? There's not two suns, there's not three suns. Oh, there are lots sun. of suns in our solar system. Is everyone. Yeah. We experience it in three different ways. Okay. Through the light, so we see everything, we're not in darkness. We feel the warmth, so we're not freezing to death, right? Yeah. And our earth is staying orbit, there is order in life. What's your point? So, my point is, is God is in a similar way. Of course, God is not, you know, we cannot compare God to a sun. Sun is the created thing. And don't. So, why are you doing but, it? Don't compare it. I'm, 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 I'm telling you the way I understand tr uh, Trinity. That's the way I perceive Trinity. So, but you realize it's going to lead you to bro, the wrong... Oh, bro, one, one second. Okay, my friend, you know, before you understand the Trinity, do, do you under before you understand the Trinity, can you actually show me the Trinity? Did anyone in the entire Bible, did they worship the Trinity? Including Jesus.
when he was a man. Can you show me a single person? Guys, 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 just ignore, just ignore, that's fine. Can you tell me? Okay. Can you tell me if the Quran existed? From no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Time. Before no, you change no, no, the topic, no, no. No, you, you, you I asked you a question. question. I asked you a question. I heard your yeah. your analogy about the sun, but which had got nothing to do with Trinity, God. Your understanding of Trinity is like the Tawhid and the Quran, right? I will come to Tawhid. Not, no problem. It's not in the Quran. No problem. I'll but, come to Tawhid. But, but answer but me this before you go. It. Before you go, answer me this. Did anyone in the entire Bible worship a triune God? Because there are many people who who actually follow Tawhid in the Quran. Including Jesus. So, before Jesus, right? Before Jesus, there was God the Father, right? And there was the Spirit. But there was also the Word of God. The Word of God that created everything that is on earth. But at one point, that Word of God became flesh. That is, He spoke. God the Father spoke. And into the womb of Mary came this Spirit, right? Uh, the Spirit that is, uh, then became the flesh. How does and that answer that is, my question? Do you, do you remember the question I asked you? Did anyone in the entire Bible, including Jesus Christ, ever worship a triune God? I answer for you. <laughs> no, please don't let him answer. <laughs> the answer is no, my friend. I'll put you out of your misery. The answer is no. You know why? You know why? Because this is what the church invented in the fourth century. They concocted the Trinity doctrine in the fourth century, 300 years after Jesus Christ. That's why you don't see anyone in the Bible what, what you, why, what, worshiping what, where is a triune God. Where, where is it? Did they concoct that? Like, what it wasn't in the Bible. Are you, are you referring to the Council of Nicaea? I'm, all the councils which brought about the doctrine, but including you know, the Council you know of Constantinople. The, you know, the Council of Nicaea was to actually to, to claim, to prove that there is a triune God. There were some heretics coming saying that God is not triune. That it, I didn't that, ask you why the council that, wasn't. That, I asked you, anyone the in the council, Bible, why did no one in the Bible well, you, you worship just, No, you just told me that uh, they concocted the triune God. Well, unless you show me, years later. my friend, but unless I'm you show me from the Bible, the, the, then I can the only say, I, see, I can only say approved, that it's from the church. Approved of it. So show me where is it in the Bible then. The only conclusion I can derive is that it is the church who invented it, not Jesus or any prophets in the Bible. Okay, the reason, the reason Christians believe in the triune God today is because of Jesus' claims. He claimed to be Son of God. Where did he claim to believe, to worship a trinity? He claimed to be Son of God. Do you agree Jesus and was... That's why, that's why we believe it. You okay, know? Let me ask it's you like, It's like... Do you believe you know, Jesus was the best role model in his time? 100%. Okay. 100%. If Jesus is the best role model, did this best role model tell anyone that you should worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? He permitted all his disciples to Where? worship him. He never stopped anybody. Wait, 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 wait a minute. David you know, didn't wait, stop yeah. people worshiping him. Does that mean David is God? You you just asked me, did, 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 God, did Jesus ask you know, people to worship him? No, 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 no. Was, you did not did listen not to the stop. question. He did the not problem is you did not listen to the question. Jesus was your best role model at that time. Did Jesus advocate the worship of a triune God? Not just himself, or just the Holy Spirit, or three of them. Did Jesus ever advocate? What was his teaching? What was the teaching of Jesus, Jesus about the worship of God? Anybody who believes in me will have life eternal. You will be with the Father. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. That, we, you know, we Muslims God, we say Amen to that. We're gonna be with. As with Muslims, we have to we, fact, we have to believe in every messenger he's prophet. He's coming back. He's coming back, and he's gonna judge everyone who did not believe in him. He's where, gonna, where did the He's going to judge those who where, reject Where is the answer? Where that is the answer to my Bible. question? As a role model, did Jesus ever tell anyone to worship a triune God? The answer, once again, my friend, which you're evading, is no. What did Jesus say when people asked him, how shall we pray? Let's see if you remember that. I don't know. Tell me. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Or our, uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Yeah. And? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Yes. As it, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Is it, Give is, us our dearly bread. Okay. Is this one of the most important prayers for you as a Christian? It's one of the prayers. I, I didn't say the most important. I said one of the most important. Is it? It's one of you the You know prayers. what? You know, what the, the you know why Jesus said this? When people asked him, how shall we pray? So when Jesus says, our Father in heaven, yes? 
Why did he not say our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven? The reason is because his teaching how to worship and how to pray is the same as other Jews at that time who worshipped the one true God, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, and the God of Jesus. Well, do you okay, know, wait, do wait, you wait, know, wait, 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 I haven't finished it, I haven't finished. So when Jesus was asked how to worship and how to pray, this was his answer. But no, the church 300 years after comes and says, no, it has to be in the name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why did they change the teaching of Jesus? Jesus says, if you love me, follow my teachings. Yes? Do you love Jesus really? I love Jesus. No, you love I church. Love Jesus. You love the church. Love Jesus. Okay, then follow. I love Jesus. Ah! Then, then worship only the Father then, as Jesus said. But, okay. No but. You no, know, no, no. Like, There's so no listen, but. I, when Jesus I, gives I you an instruction, you? you follow it without a but. <laughs> so when, um, yes, I follow him without a but. Okay, so what did yeah. Jesus say to worship? So. No, when, no, let's see if you remember that. Whom did Jesus say to worship? You don't follow Jesus, my friend. You follow the church. You're a Trinitarian, which is the I church. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus wasn't a Trinitarian. Jesus was a Unitarian who worshipped only one person as God, and that is God the Father. You, my friend, are deceived by Satan and by the church, which follows the Satan. You know why? Because I, I you go against the Bible like the Antichrist. You I, go against Jesus like the Antichrist. You go against the teachings of Jesus. Jesus in John 7 and 3... Jesus. Okay. Okay. okay, so I tell me where he teach. When, when Jesus where did he back, teach to worship a triune God? He's he did gonna, not. He's gonna judge those who did not believe him. Yeah, right? like you. That, that, like you. That, that claimed that the Bible has been changed. He's gonna judge those who claimed that the Bible has been changed. You know, even with the changed Bible, not been changed. It has been. Wait, 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 Murad, Even with the changed ideally, Bible, you know, from, it still doesn't from, say the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still in the wrong place, my friend. Even with the changed Bible. Look, I am secure in Jesus. No, that's you your know, delusion. I am not. I am not that is like the place. Hindus say Krishna will take them to eternal Jesus. bliss. Jesus. They will have moksha. This is The Hindus say this as well. That Krishna will save them. Vishnu will save them. My friend. Well, let's, let's not bring you know, Krishna. You I don't know like much. Yeah, but you. About look, look. That, they believe in 330 million gods. You narrowed it down to three. One the, God. Not three. three. One God. Who is that one God? One God. Let's see if he knows that. Yeah. Who is that one God? According Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, no, okay. who, who's the true God? According to no, no, God. he said it according to him. So according to you, it's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. Now let's see what the Bible says. John chapter 17, verse 3. The kryptonite of the Trinitarians. What does Jesus say in there? Open it. Most of them are unfamiliar with this. No, no, many of them don't. And you can put it in context, no problem. Bring even John 17, 5, which most of them do. Okay? And put it in context and you tell me according to Jesus Christ, who is the only true God. Because they, you know, they love claiming that they love Jesus. But when it comes to following his teachings, they don't. And Jesus, this was a test from Jesus Christ. That if you love me, follow my teachings. Read it aloud, my friend. Read it aloud. All right. So John 17, uh, verse 5 says. Go to 3. Why did you go to 5? You have a problem with 3? All right, I'll start in three, that's fine. Okay. And this is eternal life, that they know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have... That they know you. Did you miss the you? I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do, that Jesus is saying that... Yeah, before that, the crucifixion, that, he that, completed that, the work. That Jesus accomplished the work that the Father had sent him to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glories that I had with you from the world from, from before the world that existed. Yeah. Jesus is saying that he was with the Father before the world was why existed. Did you, you, you only read five? I, I read it. I read to the five. Yeah, yeah, but why did you emphasize on the five and you forgot the three? 